Hi, so this is Joey here at ESC Plus, and today we are going to talk about Lisa Ajax from Sweden. We are getting into the spirit of Junior Eurovision coming up in a few months, and we thought it would be nice to take a look back at Lisa's uh, start in the, uh, the Euro Junior Eurovision Song Contest uh, as a hopeful to represent Sweden back in 2012. Um, somebody's in trouble. Um, so you see, uh, back in 2012, she competed. Uh, she didn't win to represent Sweden um, in the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. And you can see from this uh, video just how young she actually looks. If you remember, she's um, barely 20 years old now. So this was, you know, she's just turned 13 or so um, at this at this point. I feel like this was a really strong effort for her. Um, the song is pretty good, but well written, um, entirely in Swedish. It didn't really suit her vocal range so much, and you can really see how how kind of nervous she is a little bit in this compared to her performances more recently. But she must have gotten somebody's attention because with this performance, it launched her into kind of the forefront of this reality music competition life that she's really had. A couple years after this uh, she went on to be the youngest person to win Swedish Idol in 2014. Uh, her winning song was a song called Unbelievable which she co-wrote um, and again it was a, a big hit in Sweden. She ended up um, being the youngest person to win that contest. It went to number one on the charts. Uh, it was a, a great moment for her but really what it set her up for is a, kind of a little bit of international notoriety and, and attention. And that came in the form of what most people would, would suggest would be uh, Melody Festivalen. So in 2016, she came on the scene um, to Melody Festivalen with a song called My Heart Wants Me Dead. Now, by this point, you know, we've four years forward from where she started Junior Eurovision um, National Finals. You can see that she's matured here and now she's got a very mature pop song. Um, this was a really well-beloved song within the Melfest community. Um, I think it's, I, I like the texture of it. I, I like the, the tones that she's giving here and it's like really sensual. Um, and it's interesting because I was a, like sometimes it takes a little while for an artist from like that's pretty young to go from this pop starlet uh, innocent kind of junior Eurovision vibe to something more mature. Lisa bridged it really quickly in my opinion. Um, and my heart wants me dead. And then the next year, this is where I started to really pay attention to her was um, with. I don't give up. Now this was uh, 2017, and this is a great performance. I mean, I think anybody who's watching in the U.S. or North America, for that matter, um, if you can picture this coming into your living room on a Saturday night and having this, you know, former Idol winner show up and sing a song, and you've got this imagery of this kind of like this very innocent face. She's all in in white and silver. It's it's not quite getting you know, any kind of bad girl vibes here or anything. But when she gets to the chorus, that's where you're gonna be in for a surprise. Because, I don't know, I know in certain parts of music in the world now, like people just throw around the F word, but it's still kind of shocking, I think for UK, US English speakers to kind of just see it kind of just tossed out there. And it's not just Lisa. I mean, I, we saw it with um, Robin's song in, in 2017 as well, but it's just it's just funny to me. Um, but I, I love this song. I know it seems like most people really preferred My Heart Wants Me Dead to this, but I was getting into this for sure. And then everyone knows from this past year, she moved on to make the final again um, in Melody Festival and with a song called Torn. This took a different turn. This was more of a ballad, right? Um, but again, her maturity is really coming through. I think that she's got this um, really introspective vibe about her. 
and she's she's showing her vocal chops. She's out there like saying, you know, I don't need to perform a basic kitty pop song. I can take something that's got this like texture and depth and deliver. And she made it to the final. And I, I think it's important for us to focus on an artist like Lisa who's come back to Melfest every year for quite some time because Sweden keeps on sending men every year. And there are a lot of female artists that are in the selection. Um, you know, we, we've had Margaret, we've had Anna Bergendahl, we had, um, you know, Lisa. And so I'm wondering what it's gonna take for um, a woman to win Melfest. Um, and so I would say, Lisa, hang in there and keep trying if that's not what you wanna do, because we've gotta break through somehow, right? So the other thing I would mention about Lisa is that she's, hasn't really put out a full length album, but she's worked on building up her discography and it's really a lot of fun to go through. One of the things that she's got out there is a Christmas song called Terribly Good Christmas. We've actually written about it when it came um, at Christmas time past year. Love it, I love it. It's, it's camp, it's fun. Um, she doesn't have a music video for it, but it's called Terribly Good Christmas. You can put that on your Christmas Spotify playlist. Um, She's also got a song called I Like that came out um, this past year. And it's it's very much like more of a, um, just a summer banger. It's, 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 you could hear it on the radio, I think. I, I think this is one of her most kind of well thought through select, uh, recordings just because it is so universal and it's got it's very current it's got this vibe that's current it doesn't invoke um a melfest stage necessarily it's i could hear this anywhere i love it um a couple of other things she's been collaborating with a lot of people and one um song that i thought was worth mentioning that she's got out there is with a collaboration with a couple of other swedish artists called Devai and call me loop and she's only featuring on this, but it's worth checking out because it's called Cry Like Kim K. And, um, you know, Kim K they're talking about is like, they're basically talking about how Kim Kardashian I guess, cries ugly a lot on her TV show or something. And again, this is hilarious to me to see like Swedish, Swedish artists kind of just drop these American isms in the songs. Like it's kind of funny to me. Um, and she's, she's had some other collaborations too um, with artists, just building up her discography. She's got like, one day she's gonna have an amazing, an amazing collection of music um, in some kind of compilation CD because she's out there working, 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 dropping songs here and there. I don't, you know, I know she's signed to Universal, but somebody needs to get everything together for her. She's got, she's been working really hard, I think in the past uh, seven years or so. And she's got a great, great compilation of music. And I just feel like she needs some, needs some packaging, maybe a promotional video or two, and kind of like elevate her international presence. And that's why we're talking about her today on ESC Plus. Lisa, we'd love to see more of you. Hope this video reaches you. Um, and we'll be looking out for new music for you soon. So thanks very much, everyone. Thanks for watching. Please share this video for your friends who might like Lisa. Um, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you can get future updates. I'm gonna go jam out to this music now. Bye.